Okay. Uh, hey, Amazon sellers and other entrepreneurs. Today, I'm happy to introduce Nathan Hirsch. Uh, Nathan leads Ecom Balance an online bookkeeping service for e-commerce and digital businesses. He's also known for co-founding uh, freeup.net and Outsource School. Uh, hi, Nathan. How are you doing today and how are your holidays? I am doing great. It's always good to come back from a holiday. You're feeling refreshed. You got some time off, time with the family. So um, yeah, feeling good. Really excited for, for 2023. Yeah, man, absolutely. It's uh, time to get back to work. Uh, so let's start with the bookkeeping basics. So if there is an Amazon seller who is, let's say, in the launch phase or already got a few products going, what should they be looking out for in terms of bookkeeping? Yeah, I mean, my overall mentality is you should never be doing your own bookkeeping. It's one, it's just not a good use of your time. Your time is better spent um, launching products, growing your business, learning how to be an entrepreneur. Um, and, and second of all, most of the time when you're doing your own bookkeeping, it's not done properly. I know I back in when I started selling on Amazon when I was 20, I did my own bookkeeping for a year and then I had to pay someone to, to redo all of it because I didn't know what I was doing. So that, that's kind of my overall mentality. Now, a bookkeeping service like mine, Econ Balance, it might not be a good fit for a, a newer seller. Like our minimum is two fifty dollars a month, and that's just our minimum. We have clients who pay $2,000 a month, um, but you need to find a, a reliable, affordable bookkeeper that knows e-commerce to do your bookkeeping from day one. And if you're a serious entrepreneur, like you have to hire a bookkeeper. You don't want to wait and wait and wait. You want to do it from day one. And if your business fails, it's not going to be because you hired a bookkeeper and spent a few hundred bucks a month. Like that's not going to take you down. Bookkeepers in the grand scheme of things compared to Amazon PPC agencies and buying inventory and all the other stuff is relatively cheap. Now, one of the best decisions I ever made when we started free up was hiring a bookkeeper from day one, before we had any revenue, before we had made any money, we hired a bookkeeper and just got into a good monthly bookkeeping process. And this allowed us to make good decisions early on. We knew where our money was going. We knew when revenue was coming in, what services were, were doing well and which ones we needed to work on. And this was a lesson I learned from my Amazon business where I started doing it myself and I went through different bookkeepers and with free up, I was like, all right, we're starting this. We're serious about it. We're committing to growing this business. We need to hire a bookkeeper that we can rely on from day one. And we went through a few different bookkeepers before we found a good one. And when we found Marius, it completely changed our company. It was one of the best hires ever made. We used him for, for four years. He's still part of FreeUp uh, today. And, and so getting a good bookkeeper in place is really important. And really, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you need a great lawyer, you need a great accountant, and you need a great bookkeeper. And you can use them for different businesses you start, but that's kind of the foundation for, for anything you do. And if you don't have those three things, it's only going to hold you back. Okay. Yeah, that's that's some great advice. Uh, definitely important to know your numbers. And, uh, you know, I met a lot of Amazon sellers who didn't know their numbers. And it really amazes me <laughs> about some people. Um, yeah, no, I mean, you got to know your numbers as an entrepreneur. You don't need to know how to do bookkeeping. You don't need to take a course on QuickBooks. You don't even have to log into QuickBooks. But you have to know how to read an income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. And you have to understand that the numbers of your business. When when we went to sell free up, one of the things that, that really helped us was we knew our numbers really well. And the clients asked us questions about clients, about revenue, about trends, about margins, like you name it, we knew it. And then when they did due diligence and they actually got into the books, it matched exactly what we told them on the initial calls because we knew our numbers really well. And, and that built a lot of trust when we were going through the sale. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Uh, very great answer. Um, so what would be some biggest mistakes Amazon sellers do regarding bookkeeping? I know you already mentioned it's uh, important not to do bookkeeping yourself. So what, what are some other things uh, you would say? Yeah. So with e-commerce selling, you need a connecting tool. Unfortunately, Amazon to QuickBooks isn't the best connection. So we use a tool called A2X. There's other tools out there. But if you want to really get the top line correct on your income statement, you got to have a tool like that. And 
a lot of bookkeepers that don't understand e-commerce, they'll just take the net deposit into your bank account and put that as a top line of your income statement. That is not correct. You need to be factoring in sales, fees, returns, refunds, all that kind of stuff. And Amazon reports can be really confusing and really complex and, and you need a good connecting tool. The other thing you want to think about when you're starting out is how do I make this as simple as possible for my bookkeepers or my accountants? And you do that by using business bank accounts, business credit cards, not personal ones, by connecting or, or by not intermingling personal and business accounts. Like we won't work with anyone who's charging personal expenses on their business credit card. And then using banks at business banks and credit cards that allow view only access for your bookkeepers. If we get view only access, we don't have to come to you every month. We can just grab your statements and do your books. If you don't have view only access, then we're going to have to ask you to send us a statement every single month and that's going to take up your time and that's not efficient. Now, could you use a personal business or a personal checking account only for business? Legally, yes, you'll be fine, but personal checking accounts don't have all the functionalities of business ones and it doesn't allow view only access um which we already talked about. So Having that right setup where you've got the right bit bank accounts, the, the connecting tool, using QuickBooks Online or Xero. Um, you, there's lots of other accounting software out there that's free, but it's free for a reason. Use either QuickBooks Online or Xero. You'll be happy that, that you did. Um, and it's going to allow you to change bookkeepers in the future because if you just use Bench and you're using Bench as software, that's really tough to move to another bookkeeper down the line. Or if you're using Wave, then you have to find a bookkeeper that uses Wave and not many bookkeepers do. So make it easy on yourself. You also don't need 10 different bank accounts usually to run your business. Less is more. Profit first, I, I don't necessarily believe in. Like Keep it as simple and as easy and as efficient as possible with your setup, but make sure you spend the time doing the right setup to save you time down the line. Great, amazing, thanks. Uh, okay, you mentioned about some of the KPIs earlier. So what would be some uh, most important KPIs your clients are looking for to see? Like in Amazon PPC, we got tacos, ACOS, spend. What, what's it for bookkeeping? Yeah, I mean, KPIs are different for, for every single business. So it's tough for me to be like, this is the KPI that matters for your business. What I will say is you want to be comparing this month to last month and this month to the same month last year. And that goes for everything. That could be top line sales. That could be profit margins. You want to see if your margins are going up and down. This could be expenses or payroll. Um, th this is what you want to do. And you also want to segment it. Like if you're, you don't want to just know, hey, my margins are, are 20%. You want to know, hey, my Shopify my margins are 20%. My Amazon margins are 15%. Hey, if I'm selling on Amazon Europe, this is how I'm doing on this platform compared to Amazon Japan. And you got to do it by SKU because there's a lot of e-commerce sellers out there that are selling five different products, but only three of them are profitable and they have no idea because they're looking at it as a whole. So that segmentation is so important and that comparing is so important. Every single month, you should have a monthly process in place where the month ends, by the 10th to the 15th, you get your income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, and you have a meeting on your calendar with your business partner, your team leaders, whoever it is, and you're going through those reports top to bottom. You're comparing like we talked about, but you're also setting the KPIs that you care about that are important to you, whether it's cost per acquisition, whether it's um, certain margins that you're tracking or how much you're spending on, on new launches. Like These are things that you're going to make specific for your business that you're going to be able to track every single month. Okay, yeah, that sounds really great. And I really agree with you on segmentation uh, because I'm big on Amazon PPC. I love that. And that's what we use a lot. We segment the data by SKU. We put the uh, SKUs in campaign names. So then in the bulk files, we can you know manipulate all the data really easy. So yeah, really nice. Um, okay, uh, so tell me more about uh, the processes in Ecom Balance. Like, how do you handle clients? What are you know some of your uh, like? Why would clients choose you? Why would they come to you for Amazon bookkeeping? Yeah, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur first. Uh, I'm not a bookkeeper first. Uh, I'm not a bookkeeper. I won't be doing your books. But we've built really good monthly bookkeeping processes in all of our, our businesses and. When we sold free up, we started consulting with different e-commerce sellers. And the common theme was before we could help people make decisions, we had to revamp their bookkeeping processes to give us real data, real numbers to, to make those decisions. So 
that was a, a big piece of it. Um, we then went to see, is there a market for bookkeeping services? And we did a lot of market research. We interviewed hundreds of e-commerce sellers. You can find those interviews on the e-com e balance blog. And we realized there was a market and that a lot of bookkeepers don't know e-commerce. A lot of bookkeepers struggle to scale. They struggle to hire. They struggle to communicate at a high level or do the business process things that entrepreneurs need. So we try to take the entrepreneur mentality to bookkeeping. We know what entrepreneurs want, whether it's getting a quote quickly without having to go through an hour phone call, whether it's um, getting integrated and having us get access quickly and having a good kickoff call and, and being accurate with due dates and estimates, and then having a good monthly process that's on autopilot where you get your books on time every single month and also get books in a way for you to understand. We speak entrepreneur. We don't speak bookkeeping. We try to make it as easy as possible to get you the information you need to make decisions on your business. And there's a lot of benefits to, to clean books. Like it can help you get investments or, or funding or sell your company or, or whatever it is. But the real reason to have good bookkeeping every single month and not just at the end of the year, not just every quarter, but every single month is to make good decisions for your business. You don't want to make decisions based on guessing or gut or because someone posted on Facebook. You want to make decisions based on what the numbers are actually telling you every single month. And that's what Econ Balance is designed for. Yeah, that's very great. Totally agree. The decisions should be made based on numbers. That's what we do as well. And uh, if uh, someone wants uh, help with bookkeeping, should they reach to your website? Yeah, go to econbalance.com. You can schedule a call. You can go through our, our pricing quote process, which only takes you a few minutes. And um, yeah, all the information's there. We've got a great blog. We have a lot of great partners that we work with in the space. You can check out our, our partner directory there. And um, yeah, we try to, to make it as easy as possible for people. Okay, sure. We will uh, leave a link down below so people who are interested can talk to you. Yeah, so sounds great. Okay, so I think we dropped some great knowledge on bookkeeping <clears throat> and I want to shift a little bit and you already touched the topic on hiring processes. So could you tell me a little bit more about free up? Uh, because I'm in the process of hiring myself for my agency and it's it's really turning out harder than I thought, uh, you know, already went uh, through some talent. So yeah, tell me about that. Yeah. So when we started our, our Amazon business back in the day, we knew nothing about hiring. We were 20 year old college kids. We tried hiring college kids. They weren't reliable. Adults didn't want to work with us. So we kind of got thrown into the virtual assistant freelancer space and made a lot of mistakes as a lot of people do and just learned a lot to the point where we created this really good hiring process which we now teach at outsource school if anyone wants to check it out it's outsourceschool.com and and once we had this great team of e-commerce VAs and freelancers we started talking to other e-commerce sellers that struggled to hire and we started offering and leasing out our VAs and freelancers to these different sellers now this quickly became free up and, and started to scale and people really liked our, our talent and our vetting process and free up is a marketplace that pre vets VAs and, and freelancers before they get on the platform and matches you up uh, very quickly and free up we ran for four years we, we scaled it to doing over 12 million dollars a year um, it was acquired at the end of 2019 right before the the pandemic and Connor and I kind of shifted our focus to econ balance which we talked about and our other venture outdoor school where we teach entrepreneurs our hiring process and I mean at the end of the day just like finances aren't the most sexy topic in the world, um, they're important. You have to know how to do it. And hiring is another thing that a lot of people don't talk about. But if you don't know how to hire, you're, it's going to be very hard to be successful as an entrepreneur. And good hires is addicting. It, it helps you make money and take your business to the next level. And bad hires is frustrating and expensive and waste time and, and sets you back. So I'm a firm believer that as an entrepreneur early on, you have to learn how to hire and you have to learn how to hire well. And if you don't want to build your own hiring process and you just want mine, uh, check out Outsource School. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I definitely should check this out because as I said, really had some issues with finding uh, good people for some positions 
And yeah, because I'm a, a self-taught guy as well, started, uh, you know, trying online businesses from young age and never had like really formal education, just like hands-on experience and then like online courses. So yeah, I have to improve in that area. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and uh, I think the last topic for today I wanted to ask you is you've been on quite a few podcasts and uh, I really appreciate that uh, you showed up because uh, it's only my second interview uh, for giving me this opportunity. So uh, tell me about this podcast experience, uh, some advices, how do you get on podcasts? Yeah. So as part of Outsource School, we have a, the podcast outreach formula that shows you how to um, use virtual assistants to, to get on podcasts. And podcasting is something I, I kind of came across by accident. You got to remember, I was a an e-commerce seller where you're kind of behind the scenes and no one knows who you are. And, and then we started free up, which was our first experience having our own website and learning SEO and building partnerships and doing B2B and having our own brand. And, and so I got invited on my first podcast and, and it went well. And, and I just remember realizing like, Hey, this is a great way to network and connect with people in the space. This is a great way to get in front of thousands of people at once. This is a great way to um, improve SEO and get backlinks and have evergreen content and lead to other opportunities and getting invited in speaking engagements and podcasts or, or whatever it is. So, I mean, if you're running a B2B business podcast, it should be a part of your marketing plan. Now, do you need to go on 700 podcasts like I have? Probably not. But if you're doing one podcast a month, that's just a great way to, to complement any other marketing strategies that, that you're doing. And I really do believe it should be a part of everyone's marketing strategy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what you said about being an entrepreneur and kind of in the back, that's the case with me because I have a Amazon brand with my business partner and then the agency. So we just really worked on the brand and worked on a few clients we had from word of mouth and uh, we never really did the talking. And now I feel like that's the time and I want to make this resource not just for my own marketing, but like really create a source for Amazon sellers, e-commerce entrepreneurs who will come to my channel or some other resource to get amazing tips uh, from experts like you. Yeah, no, I love it. And and uh, being a podcast guest, to be honest, is not for, for me, but I have a lot of respect of, for people that do it. And um, the, the world needs more people podcasting. So good luck. And if I can help in any way, let me know. Yeah, definitely. Well, I would love to have another call sometime later when uh, I'll be way more advanced uh, and I'll have some more questions by then. But for now, Nathan, yeah, thanks so much for joining me. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, uh, great knowledge. Yeah, thank you. Have a good rest of the day.